I'm Charity Nebbe, and this is Greetings from Iowa. The cultures of our state, like anywhere else, are a complex mix of people, stories, backgrounds, and heritage. As our state has grown and evolved, so too have the people and traditions. On this episode, we'll head to Denison to meet a journalist who's built a Spanish language newspaper that serves several Iowa communities. We'll visit a stunning Hindu temple that skirts the Des Moines River. And we'll cook with Hien Lo Ti, who came to Iowa along with thousands of others as part of Governor Robert Ray's refugee initiative in the 1970s. Join me as we explore the stories that shape our state. It's all coming up next on Greetings from Iowa. Funding for Greetings from Iowa is provided by... With our Iowa roots and Midwestern values, Farmers Mutual Hail is committed to offering innovative farm insurance for America's farmers, just as we have for six generations. Farmers Mutual Hail, America's crop insurance company. The Pella Roll Screen Foundation is a proud supporter of Iowa PBS. Pella Windows and Doors strives to better our communities and build a better tomorrow. Thousands of Amish and Mennonite people immigrated to America in the 19th century, where many people still follow the teachings and traditions. Several groups live in and around Iowa communities, and you don't have to go far to see a horse and buggy crossing the road. My name is Daniel Nisley, and welcome to Kelowna, Iowa. Today, Kelowna is home to a wide array of locally owned shops, restaurants, and the Mennonite and Amish people. But what draws tourists here each year is its striking connection to what Iowa was like in the past, when pioneers first settled the rolling prairies. This is the, the Kelowna Depot, and it was built here in 1879 and was used here for close to 100 years. The town of Kelowna, people felt like we need to save this one. And so it was moved to this spot and is refurbished to the way it used to be. I was born and raised in this community and still living here. It's a quiet place and it's very enjoyable. I, I like, I can't think of any other place I'd rather live. <laughs> also, people are interested in seeing the, the more simple life that the Amish have. This, this is a, some of the type of clothing the Amish wear. The Amish way of life was mainly agriculture. It was rooted in farming. You won't find an Amish family living 50 miles away from, from a community and be on their own. There's, they're always interacting with each other. I have done tours since 1996. Probably 95% of the people they meet are very friendly and just very accommodating and, and uh, people just really like the experience of coming into Kelowna. A 
Papers have to continue. Newspapers have to continue. Newspapers in base time to investigate, to have that interaction, eye with eye, face with face with people. The teachers, the administration, the staff, and the students. And able to express it in the print, you know, is what the news is about. It's not the same to read it or to hear it, to have somebody who translated. Because in translation, that is something very important also. In translation, the message, many times, mostly the time, get lost. We Latinos need that information. We need la prensa. And I'm going to continue. <laughs> yeah. In all Latin America, we have la prensa. Especially in Central America. So la prensa in English means the press. We are in Denison, Iowa. And Denison, Iowa is, um, is a beautiful community. It's, it's a mix, the cultures, because in Denison we have Latinos, we have Sudanese, we have Asian people, and of course, the Caucasian community. And it changed a lot. In the 90s, early 90s, there was too many uh, stores, the business, don't was dominated by Latinos, and now every street that you go in Denison, you can find uh, restaurants, stores, every kind, the Latino business. I am from the north, that is the rural area from Nicaragua. Uh, Esteli is my hometown. I already knew it, that I want to be a journalist. The first edition de la prensa, we started in May 3, 2006. We started with Kerro and Denison. And two years later, we extend to Spencer, Cherokee, Storley, Perry, and Des Moines. My, my big challenge right now, you know, is that it's just me. For the 14 years, I, I have been doing La Prensa by myself. I do the sales, I do the interview, I, I write the stories. I don't like to say this, but I think age is starting to hit me. <laughs> Hola, amigos de La Prensa. Hoy es 26 de marzo. Hola, amigos de La Prensa. Nos encontramos en una de las últimas entrevistas de la serie. I think journalist is not just a career. I see journalists as something humanity. It's something that is going to make people not just to be informed, but also smile and knowing the neighbor. That is very, very important that we know our neighbor. Newspaper need to survive because it's not just a business. You know what La Prensa is? It's the only, only way the Latinos have in these small communities to receive the information, the true information, truthfully. I feel that I am giving voice to people. I like that. I do like, but it's, I don't like it like arrogance. You know how I like it? I feel, as a, I, I feel that I have a mission in life, okay? Yeah, I feel proud of that, and I am very, very appreciative with God to give me that ability, you know, to, to, to help others in this way. Hinduism is the, the most open-ended beautiful religion that has no restrictions on how you worship and what you worship. The practices and rituals can be as easy as a meditation or a yoga, and you meditate and pray for the 
abstract supreme brahman or you participate in a ritual such as the abhishekam and other things you can do both and you can achieve the same success that's the beauty of hinduism this temple was built in 2005 the thought of having um, a place of worship for the hindus living in central iowa and when we looked around for a spot one of the the significance of this place is uh because it has a river around it way behind the temple all temples that are constructed in india have a river or a lake or a pond around with them and all temples also face east as the sun comes up and the source of energy is received directly into the temple and when you come into the temple you see the tower that is located on top of the building each tier is an elevation of our spiritual journey starting with the lowest tier explaining about how we mortals live look up to the god as our savior and then as you go to up to the tiers there are the gods that are set up in the front as you seek their permission to go to the next level in the spiritual journey hinduism advocates the god to be both abstract as well as manifested in a divine form as well as a human form there are several manifestations of god in hinduism and those manifestations are all what you see in our temple as deities so tonight is a very special day um it's called maha shiva ratri maha means grand shiva is shiva uh, ratri means night right uh, so the belief is at the stroke of midnight um shiva appeared in front of um, the world you know as a force of energy not that he, he got created or anything he just appeared right and we are celebrating that and usually it's uh, we follow all night chanting uh, and people fast for that occasion i'm fasting today i haven't eaten anything from morning and shiva we feel like some um, uh, water bathing right so all night long they are going to cool him down calm him down with water and then um, do bhajans meaning uh, meditation chanting um, of uh, our uh, scriptures and and um, it's very powerful and vibrant yasa am deva divi pranvanti paksham ya antarikshe bahuda bhavanti and we are going to do a showering process called abhishekam today the abhishekam involves materials such as milk yogurt honey sugar and ghee most of these products come from cow cow is a sacred animal in hinduism way we use this abhishekam we do gives the divine energy preserve the divine energy in the lord and that energy comes out as a positive energy to the visiting devotees shanti 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 hi community is the reason we exist here we have many celebrations celebrations of festivals and special days india especially it's it's a very amazingly diverse community every state has its own native language and its own native rituals and customs but that brings the strength in diversity that's what we all believe in so we are we play the color holi is celebrated in different parts of the country in, in slightly different way some parts in north it's it's uh, welcoming the spring uh, and you move and some places it's just uh, uh, spray, uh, spraying colors colored water and uh, and uh, colored powder uh, just for for a lot of community fun and uh, i when i was little i was very surprised to read that the 
the founding reason for that is for that one day, uh, everybody forgets about different socioeconomic status, skin, uh, color of the skin, or all the differences people have and they all merge and with the different colors on the, them, nobody would recognize the differences in the skin color or how they look, where they come from, they are poor or rich. So that is, that is the, the biggest part that I like about, about Holi. Everyone is equal. You know, that is the most important um, philosophy of Hinduism, right? Oneness of the world, right? You know, the slogan you actually see when you are coming in, you see, I see God in you, right? That is what it means. Pretty much, if, you, if I can see God in you and you see God in me, pretty much we can't fight, right? Because you are the same as me, right? So that is the oneness that we strongly believe in. There were so many times when I came to this country about 20 plus years ago, um, I was alone. Back then, you know, there aren't many Indians around. So during that time, I've had a lot of times of alone, uh, loneliness, right? And, and when I came here, a lot of people were like that. And so I always tell people, um, religion is not to solve your problems, actually. Religion uh, and, and the temple is a place where you can feel home, you know, where someone is listening to you, right? Whether it's God or your friends. And I think that is what this temple gives me. That hope that tomorrow is going to be a better day than today, right? That, that hope is what um, drives me to this temple. I am here with Hien Loti, a member of the Thai Dom community in Des Moines. Hien, thank you so much for talking with me. You are welcome. I'm, I'm glad to be here. And <laughs> you are going to cook for us in a little while, which yes. I'm very excited mm -hmm. about. But let's go back in time. Your family came to the United States in 1979. Before you came to the United States, you spent three years in a refugee camp. Can you tell me a little bit about what that was like? We live in a, like a row house. The bill, you know, is about two feet high, and the floor is all made out from bamboo. You know, the living condition is not, you know, perfect. It was hard. Yeah, because we have to get the water. It's not running water. You know, we have to dig our own well. To um, some people dig, you know, like we have. A row house is, you know, big enough, they dig a well right in their room. Wow. So you were in the refugee camp for about three years yes. before you finally were able to come to the United States. Mm -hmm. yes. You were 16 years old when you came to the United States. Yes, uh -huh. how, how many members of your family were able to come? Uh, all 13 of us. So it, it was, you know, three years, that's a long time. People, I think we are set, my family set the record because nobody stay that long. Mm. Nobody stay that long except my family. Wow. Yeah, because we don't have money. We not social life with other people. With that tied up, you know, my dad have to uh, go trap a sparrow birds. And then Thai people or Laotian people, they believe when you buy birds, any or fish, you know, turtles, and you release, and when you release uh, bad luck, you know, you release, and then people, the Thai people, they buy. So then so that's what extra money, to... yeah. Uh, yeah, that's extra money. Yeah. So you yeah. just found any way that you could. To have extra money because the so food they... that they pass to us, and just not enough. Hien, you're yeah. going to make some traditional Thai dom stuffed fried fish. Yes, Tell me yeah. a little bit more about it. Well, this one is a tilapia. Okay, so I bought I it just so that, yeah, you can, you can buy it at the store. Uh -huh. Then I, you know, I cut off the head and then I clean and I uh, leave the bone in there. So I seasoning with, you know, salt and MSG. That's what only Salt and MSG, all right. No, no recipe, just guessing. Yeah, you know <laughs> what you're yes, doing. <laughs> uh, and this one is um, my sister and I 
record or when fishing and then they call white bass. White bass. We got okay. this from Red Rock. Great. So yeah, one head on to but look and like. Would that be normally how you would eat it? With yeah, the head? So, yeah, yeah. I okay. eat, I eat the cheekbone. I eat the brain. I eat. <laughs> I know you guys, but there's ooh, a lot of know, nutrition yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the stuffing is uh, lemongrass from my yard mm -hmm. and big onions, and I bought uh, deals from um, the store, yeah. yeah, deals from the store, and then uh, chili, hot chilies is from my garden, and ginger is from the store. It, it just smell, smells then, so yeah. good. Yeah, and then the, in, the main in thing was just uh, salt and MSG. Okay. So the MSG, the brand that I got, is made from Iowa corn. Oh, really? Yes. And do you, the, do you like to leave them together for a while so that uh, the flavors yes, melt? Yes, to marinate, you know, for mm -hmm. a little bit. And after I stop the fish in, I tie up with the string right, from my yard, from my crochet. Great. So, Why don't right you show yeah. us? Yeah. Okay. And did yeah. your mother teach you how to do this? Uh, I watched my mom and then I, I learned from watching her. You're just yes, going to wrap the string yeah. around. Is it time to fry these fish? Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. So now we just wash it. Okay. Part of what makes this story unique is that Governor Robert Ray yes. petitioned President Ford mm -hmm. to allow the Thai Dom people to stay together. So there were 2,400 Thai Dom people who ended up settling in Iowa to create a community mm -hmm. and to keep your culture alive. Yes. I know that you came as a teenager and things were hard. But tell me a little bit about that community, the Thai Dom people coming together in Iowa. What was that like? Well, they, uh, you know, back home, like when they escaped from North Vietnam to Laos, they settled in the capital of Laos, Vieng Chan. And like people live in different cities, they want to be together. Like, the, you know, they want to be close to family mm -hmm. because the, 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 you know, Asian culture, they, they like stick together, especially family. So how do you know when it's time to flip? Uh, when you can see the, the edge of the fish, it's kind of like caramelized, like nice and brown, okay. golden brown. The caramelization yeah, yeah, yeah. tells uh -huh. you. So while the fish is finishing, we also started steaming some rice. Yeah. And you brought a traditional bamboo rice steamer. Yeah. We're going to break the rice ready to go to uh, steam this one. All right. So you just mm -hmm. grab okay. a handful. Yeah, yeah, yeah and just grab a handful. Right. Yeah, then you have to break them up, small piece like that. If it, you know, cook uh, faster, faster, you know, right? yeah, uh, reheat faster, sense. yeah. But my mom said, don't do lazy way, my mom says. <laughs> I'm she, starting to get to know your mom, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, my mom, she, <laughs> she very particular. She very... Yeah. So another word so for Thai Dam, you know, like you don't do neatly. Uh, is it glow, glow? That's what the, the word is. Looking good. All right. Yeah, yeah. You think they're done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. This purple rice is so beautiful. And this is very special oh. to the Thai Dom people, right? Yes. For the old folks, they do. I think young generation, they like it too now. Well, it's yeah. beautiful. And I can't yeah, imagine anybody not liking yeah. it. Everything is ready. So show me how you would put your plate together at home. I'll use my chops to get my sauce. All right. So you just break up the yeah, fish. Yeah, just break yourself. up the fish. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful. Yeah. I'm going to start with trying yeah. this beautiful sauce. Is it going to burn my mouth? Might yeah. be a little bit. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a try. Yeah. Mm, it is spicy and garlicky. Garlicky, yes. And uh -huh. delicious. Mm -hmm. Ian, thank you so much for making this beautiful meal for us. You are very and welcome. And for sharing your story. I think probably the first time I see something like this. Yeah. This is very Thai-dum traditional. My dad's favorite, or, or my whole family, I shouldn't say. Oh, I That's love it. Thing. Well, thank yeah. you so much. You are very welcome. Thanks for joining us as we look in on the people, cultures, and communities of our state. We'll see you next time for another episode of Greetings from Iowa. Funding for Greetings from Iowa is provided by... With our Iowa roots and Midwestern values, Farmers Mutual Hail is committed to offering innovative farm insurance for America's farmers, just as we have for six generations. Farmers Mutual Hail, America's crop insurance company. The Pella Rolls Green Foundation is a proud supporter of Iowa PBS. Pella Windows and Doors strives to better our communities and build a better tomorrow.